Hi, this is Mike Hines, and I'm a professor here at the Stanford Graduate School of Education, where my work focuses on the history of America's schools. What we now know as Black History Month had its beginnings as Negro History Week, which was invented by the famed historian, educator, and activist Carter G. Woodson in 1926. Negro History Week was a direct challenge to traditional curricula of the time period, which often degraded and dehumanized black people. Negro History Week was also inextricably linked to black calls for social and political equality. More than just a chance to talk about a few notable achievements, Negro History Week was a call to action. Although Negro History Week became one of his most widely known interventions, it was only part of Dr. Woodson's efforts to develop, democratize, and disseminate information on black history. He also pursued this work through the establishment of the Association for Negro Life and History, its journals, the Journal of Negro History, and the Negro History Bulletin, and textbooks, speeches, pamphlets, and materials for every grade level from college down to kindergarten. Now, Woodson didn't do this work alone. Moving from idea to reality, took the dedication of thousands of black teachers, most of them women, who were largely responsible for shaping the celebration through their work in the classroom. It also took the work of entire communities, including churches, fraternities and sororities, libraries and lodges, social clubs, and civic organizations. This reflected Woodson's desire to encourage lay people, not just academics, to preserve and present their own histories. As the movement continued to grow, it outstripped the bounds of a single week. And the word Negro, which was outdated by the 1960s, was replaced by a new generation born and raised in the civil rights struggle. Black History Month emerged in its current form during those decades and is still going strong. So, is this celebration still relevant today? Well, it depends on who you ask. Critics charge that the progress we've made from the 1920s to the 2020s has largely made Black History Month irrelevant or that worse, singling out black history is actually counterproductive to broader efforts at inclusion. Although we may have made progress, however, research from the Southern Poverty Law Center and other sources still shows that we are far from our goal of honoring the multiple voices in our classrooms and challenging dominant narratives. At the same time, new and emerging movements for racial justice call out for historical context, which our schools simply fail to provide. Carter G. Woodson himself was cautiously optimistic that students in the future would no longer need Black History Month if we taught in ways that honored and elevated our students and told their stories all year long. But we're not there yet. So Black History Month will continue to be what it always has been, a celebration, a stinging indictment, and a call to action, all in one. LSNBC announcement for Sunday, February the 5th, 2023. Midweek services for February the 8th, noonday prayer. Join us Wednesday via conference call for noonday prayer as we reflect on scripture and pray for our pastor, church family, and community. Please post your prayer request on the church's Facebook page. Zoom Bible study. LSNBC believes it's important for everyone to personally explore the word of God together. Connect with us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Zoom Bible study with Pastor Hurst. Saturday morning meditation and prayer. Start your weekend off with prayer and meditation at 8 a.m. via conference call. Sunday, February the 12th, Sunday school conference call from 10 to 10.30. And at 11 a.m., we will have our annual celebration of love service. 
Our guest speakers for this year will be Elder Fenton and Jacqueline Rogers. Your 2023 membership update form for this must be submitted by February 26th in order for us to upgrade our church directory. Please put them in the churches in the foyers drop box. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Please share your time and your resources with our sick, seniors, and bereaved families. When we seek to take care of others, we are serving our Lord and Savior by being his hands and feet. Our media interns, we welcome Haley and Nee. We are thrilled to announce that Haley, a senior, and Nee, a junior, at Hope County High School will work as interns for our media ministry. Mrs. Callie Graham is in charge of organizing internships for the CT program. We are appreciative of Pastor Hurst's vision, which aims to bring the church and the community together. Ms. Graham deserves recognition, too, for her commitment to the youth in Hope County. As we carefully endeavor to bring God's story to all people, the LSNBC Media Internship is an opportunity for young men and women to learn about, experience, and explore media ministry and the church. We look forward to Nee and Haley sharing their gifts with us. February is a month that's, um, that has a whole lot of activities. Some of, some of those that are important to us are Black History Month, American Health Month, President's Day, Valentine's Day. Uh, there's a National Random Act of Kindness Day. There's a National Pizza Day, Sticky Bun Day, and Read a Book in the Tub Day. But most importantly are the people that are born in this special month. We will have our February birthday blessings by Deacon McCollum. Amen. Amen. Sister Nita just about said it all. February is packed. Black history and all the other things that she named. It's a short month, but it has a lot to offer, including black history. And we only celebrate it in the month of February, but black history should be every day that we need to look around and see how far we've gone. We haven't reached there yet, but uh, Martin Luther King said it best. Uh, yeah, I might not get there with you, but we're going to get there. So we just stay the course. Uh, on this cold, chilly morning in February, we want to wish all those that's born in that great month of February, would you please stand? Wow. A busy month, too. February. All right, everybody know what we need to do with all these great voices. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. We thank you so much. A wise man once said, forget about it your past. You cannot change it. Well, Lee Spring want to say something to you today. Birthday get, uh, uh, people, we would like to add, forget about your present too. We didn't get you anything. In closing, what you ask, we sure hope you receive it. What you seek, we sure hope you find it. And what you wish, we hope it be fulfilled. God bless you, and happy birthday. Pastor was briefed for the morning. Uh, yesterday at 12, I attended the funeral of Dr. Uh, Dr. Lorenzo Augustus Lynch, who um, been here several times to preach, and I must say, Leonzo, his son, did an excellent job. It was a good home, home going celebration. Again, I'm joined with Anita in welcoming 
Haley and me uh, to our media ministry. Amen. Amen. A very nice young lady. We're so thankful for them being a part of us. I also want to say James Bowie was, he was hired as our new uh, custodians. If there's any issue uh, with anything that he's doing in, as a, in reference to cleaning, uh, we don't want all of you all running to him, pointing out areas that need to be cleaned. If you would, would you let Deacon um, Black know uh, the areas or some mishap? Make sure you take your concerns to Deacon Black so we can do this in a, in a, in a good way, the, the right way. Amen. Again, let's remember our Wednesday noonday prayer and Bible study, our Saturday morning meditation and prayer. Also, we want to pray for um, Sister Mildred Aileen. I understand that she had a medical emergency on yesterday. I'm trying to get more information. I know Sister Kathy is gone there today, so we want to keep her in prayer. Amen. Amen. The NAACP Community Forum, reclaiming our community and restoring peace, will be here on February the 16th. And Lee Spring, we don't want to say this is for other people. This is for us as well. Uh, because what's happening in these communities when these young men are shooting and killing and shooting in people's houses, it affects all of us. So as many of you all can come, it's bad that we had a forum and looked around. We hosted it and only saw about five persons from Lee Springs. It involves you. And one thing that's happened in the black community, we have become so detached. If, it's not, if it doesn't affect me, you don't, get, you don't get involved. But it does affect you. If you're a Christian, any time you hear about a young man dying in the street, it ought to keep you from sleeping at night. So please do come. Try to come. We don't, we're only in here about an hour. Please do. Please do. Please do come. Uh, lift up your head, O your gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty, mighty, mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O your gates. And be ye lifted up your everlasting door. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Amen. We should now have a selection by our combined choir. And I will come back with our scripture and invocation prayer.
God never fails. We're going to ask that you would rest to your feet. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Psalm 121, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 121, verses 1 through 4. And the word reads as thus. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Elohim, God, you a way maker, a promise keeper, and a mind regulator. We acknowledge you just for who you are. God, we, are, we confess that we are nothing without you. We can't even breathe without you. We can't even move and have our being without you. But God, we thank you just for who you are. God, we just worship you just for who you are. God, we give you glory and praise just for who you are. God, we ask that you come into this place. God, that you will move like never before. That you will strengthen us in the name of Jesus. That your word should go forth, God. We need your presence here this morning. We need you to sit with us for just a little while. And God, we're going to give you all the praise. We're going to give you all the honor and give you all the glory that is redeemed unto your name. Amen. We ask that you please remain standing as we go through our affirmation of faith. Our media ministry will put it on the monitors before you, and we will recite it together in unison. Amen. 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 Our affirmation of faith, and let's state it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the universal church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask that you will be seated. We would like to welcome all of our visitors who are visiting for the first time with us, or who may be viewing our service on live stream. We thank God for ordering your steps here at Leech Springs Missionary Baptist Church this morning to worship with us where he is Lord and we worship him in spirit and in truth. At this time, we will have our health and wellness by Deacon Clyde Huff and I will come back with our offer to a responsive reading. Good morning. Our health and wellness report for today. Over the past few weeks, the trend of COVID-19 has been rising and falling from week to week. Currently, the dashboard shows that the number of COVID cases over the past week has gone down, and the number of hospitalizations due to COVID has also gone down. 
So continue to get vaccinated, continue to wear a, a tight fitting mask and get tested. For the state of North Carolina, the percentage of all emergency room department visits that are COVID-like symptoms can signal how much illness there is in a community. For the past, last week, 4.3% of all emergency room visits were for COVID-like symptoms. And the previous week, it was at 4.9. For hospitalization admissions due to COVID-19, the data shows that there was 1,090 patients hospitalized due to COVID-19, down from 1,276 the previous week. There has been a decrease in the number of cases of COVID-19 and the number of hospitalizations due to COVID-19 for the past four weeks, and that's a very good sign. For Hope County, the number of COVID reported cases for the past week was 103 cases compared to 110 the previous week, and the week before that it was at 128. So as you can see, the numbers are going down here in Hope County also. December 3rd marked the last death that was reported for COVID-19 here in, in Hope County. There has been a total of 38 deaths in Hope County for the past year. So many people you know they get tested that, that don't have symptoms or do have symptoms and it's not reported if they become positive. Also, home, a lot of home tests are being done and if they're positive, they're not being reported also. This also sort of skews the numbers because a lot of people that are positive is not reported to the uh, CDC. <coughs> So this downward trend for positive cases for hospitalization and for the number of COVID cases is going down. That's great news for us all. We thank Deacon Huff for that health and wellness and we ask that you will govern yourselves accordingly. It's offering time. It's offering time. Amen. We're going to ask that if our media ministry would put our offertory appeal upon the screens, we ask that you rest to your feet with your offering in your hand. Amen. It's tithing and giving time. To whom does the tithe belong? Why should we tithe? Because the Lord says, Bring the all the time into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Should we tithe our gross or our net? Tithe is not a problem. It's 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 not a What is God's promise to the tither? Altogether, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for this giving. We ask that you would bless it and multiply it for the upbuilding of thine kingdom. Bless those that have a desire to give, but they have not. And those that are giving, God, we ask that you bless them abundantly, God. Do what you want to do for the upbuilding of thine kingdom. And we will give your name all the glory and honor and praise. And the Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. We will now ask if our trustees will come forth and that you will be led by the direction of our ushers. Amen. 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 Amen.
Come on, church. Let's stand up and sing that together. We all know that. Amen. Amen. will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We want to thank our choir for leading us in worship. It's word time. It's time for the word. And I don't know about you. Oh, I need a word on this morning. I need to hear from heaven this morning. I need to hear from the Lord on this morning. At this time, we will ask our choir to come with our spiritual selection. Following that, we will have the spoken word from our pastor, the renowned, the Reverend Bruce C. Hurst. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm gonna take a trip on that good old gospel ship, and we go sailing through the air. And when my ship comes in. I'm gonna leave this old world of sin And we go sailing through the air Come on, one more time I'm gonna take a trip On that good old gospel ship And we go sailing Gonna leave this old world of sin and we'll go sailing through the air. Trouble in my way, in my way. I have to cry.
Lord, another day's journey. And we are so glad about it. Thank you for last night's laying down. And for calling us by our names right early this morning. We're so thankful. As the rain fell from the heavens, we had a roof over our heads. Food in our refrigerators, clothes in our closets. You sure have been good to us. And for that we say thank you. Some didn't rest at all last night. Tossing and turning all night. But thank the choir, thank you for the choir reminding us. Troubling our way. We have to cry sometime. But the Lord will fix it. He'll fix it out the while. I ask now, O oh Lord, that you would be with me in preaching. Because I'm nothing without you. I can't do a thing unless you come. Now take the coals off the altar in glory. Place them on my tongue. Because if my tongue catch on fire, the people will catch on fire. And then take all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Dr. Kemp. And to our choir, we thank the Lord for for you. We're so thankful how you all are working together because we've had to transition, uh, because we don't have a permanent uh, musician, but I thank you for the wonderful way, the wonderful way that you have transitioned and to try to, amen, you have done a good job. Amen. And for that, I'm, I am so thankful. Thank you, Reverend Ely, for leading us in worship. We thank the Lord for, for, for you. In Psalms 81, verse 16. Psalms 81, verse 16. We find these words. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. With your prayers and aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about honey out of a rock. Honey out of a rock. The writer of this psalm is Asaph. Asaph wrote 12 psalms, Psalms 50 and Psalm 73 to 83. He was a Levite of the family of Gershom. Scholars suggest that he was the greatest singer of all times. I commend David, the sweet singer of Israel, because he understood the importance of worship. He made the worship of God a priority. He understood if, if he didn't get the worship right, everything else would be wrong. He didn't leave the worship and pray solely up to the congregation. He honored the anointing of the Holy Ghost, anointed worship leaders. He appointed Heman and Jephthah and Asaph. Heman and Jephthah presided over the worship in the country while Asaph led the worship in the sanctuary. Asaph had a passion for worship as if it was a matter of life and death. He took great joy in leading others into the throne room of God. His, peer, his peers recognized his gift in selecting him to lead the music as David brought back the ark from the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite with praise and sacrifice. David wore a linen ephah. Every six steps, David danced with all his might. In Psalm 81, he gives us one of the promises of God. There are over 3,573 promises recorded in the Holy Writ. Asaph says God will satisfy us with honey out of the rock. 
You and I know that honey is perhaps the sweetest thing that nature can produce. And diametrically opposite, a rock is one of the hardest things in nature. So here in our text, we, we have sweetness coming out of hardness. Sweetness coming out of rocky places. This is one of God's promises to his children. We all know that the promises of God are yea and amen. So we have to claim this promise for our lives. We got to get this promise in our spirit. Saints of God, we know that God is not speaking in literal terms. We all know we can get honey from either a honeycomb or from a jar. The Lord is saying something much deeper, much spiritual. The Lord is saying we all are going to experience some hard places in this life. We're going to run up against the rocks. We're going to come up to some rocky places. But don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't despair. Don't declare that it's over. Don't plan your demise. Why? Because we're going to experience sweetness out of the hard experiences of life. Yes, sweetness. How the rocky places. Pastor Harris, I must confess, you on my street this morning. I must confess, in my current state, what you are saying sounds illogical, absurd. Insane and crazy. I'm between a rock and a hard place right now. And I know I'm not alone, so so many are asking the same question I want to ask. Where's the honey? 114 million live below the poverty line. That's half of Americans. And they are saying, where's the honey? 38 million children. Go to bed hungry every night. They asking the question, where's the honey? 68 million Americans working two or three jobs, trying to put food on the table, trying to make ends meet, and the ends still not meeting. And they want to know, where's the honey? Let's make it personal. My family's torn apart. And I never saw it coming. Where's the honey? My marriage has turned sour. I can't stay and I can't leave. Where's the honey? My burdens are too much to bear. Where's the honey? My back's against the wall. I can't see my way out. I can't see my way up. Where's the honey? My laws get heavy. Every day the laws get heavy. Where's the honey? My finances are jacked up. Where's the honey? My world has turned upside down. Where's the honey? My nights are dark and dismal. Where's the honey? My medical diagnosis got me on pins and needles. Tell me, preacher, where's the honey at? Where's the sweetness in my hard place? My name and character on the fire. Where's the honey? My good is evil spoken of. Where's the honey? Dallas don't seem to be working. Where is? Where's the honey? Pastor Harris, you're telling me out of this hard place, I will experience honey. I will experience the sweetness of life. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Just hold on. Just hold out. Just wait on him and be of good courage. Just anchor down. Just trust him. Just trust him. Your experience will go to sweetness. Even in your hard place. 
Saints of God, I must be candid this morning. I used to wonder why God didn't remove the rocks from the path of life. None of us, including me, don't like the hard places. We, we say to ourselves, if God really loved us, he will go ahead of us and remove the rocks. I've concluded that God knows what he's doing. God knows what's best for us. God is at work. You and I don't appreciate the rocks. We don't welcome the rocks, but we need them just the same. I've learned, like many of you, that some of my sweetest experiences have come because of the rocks. I have rocks. You have rocks. All of God's children got rocks. This was certainly true of people in the Bible. I think of young Joseph, who seemed to have nothing but rocks. He was hated by his own brothers, sold into Egypt as a slave. Then because he would not give in to the lust of Potiphar's wife, that old cougar, he was thrown into prison. Then while in prison, he was forgotten for two years. It was just one rocky situation after another, and seemingly for no purpose. But when it was over, when God had fulfilled his purpose, Joseph discovered, honey out of his rock, those hard experiences prepared him to become God's servant and second ruler of Egypt. David had similar experiences, anointed king of Israel. He was hunted like a common criminal. King Saul hated him and tried to kill him. David had to flee from his home and live in cave. David's own son rebelled against him and wanted him dead. David went through his rocky situation. I suppose David had his doubts. And here the enemy say, it's not worth it to serve the Lord. Serving the Lord will never pay off. Why don't you give up, David? God promised you a kingdom, and all you have is rocks. David didn't give up. And one day God gave him honey out of his rocks. In fact, many of his songs came out of a rocky situation. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Came out of a rocky situation. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I trust. Came out of a rocky situation. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but I will remember the Lord. Came out of a rocky situation. I've been young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Came out of a rocky situation. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Came out of a rocky situation. I'll lift up my eyes unto the hills. But what's coming my help? Came out of a rocky situation. We black folk, we know honey can come out of a rock. We had, to, we had the slave master put his whip on our backs, but we still had a song. We turned, we turned, we turned rocks into sweet places. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody but Jesus. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. We know how to take rocks and get sweetness. Saints of God, I need to raise the interrogative here. How do you handle the hard places of life? 
How do you handle the rocket situation of life? Do you try to ignore them and pretend they don't exist? And of course, this only makes the hard places harder. Do we just throw up our hands in the air and call it quits? Do we use alcohol and drugs in an attempt to escape the hard places of life? Only to discover when we sober up and the high wears off, we're still in a hard place. Do we become bitter, bitter and play the blame game? How we answer this question depends on our survival. Yesterday I attended the funeral of Dr. Lorenzo Augustus Lynch, who was a mentor for many young preachers, even to me. During the homecoming celebration, I was thinking of some, some, some of Dr. Lynch's hard places in life, his rocket situation. I thought about how he led the building of a new edifice in the 70s that cost $1.4 million in the early 70s. I will not state the name of that church. Years later, the grandchildren, you recall in the Bible when it says there was a new Pharaoh, there was a new Negro who didn't know Joseph. The grandchildren of many of the saints who crossed the Jordan River they voted him out. That's a hard place. That's a rocky place. He had counseled the confused. He had comforted the bereaved. He had buried the dead and prayed for their prosperity. Voted him out. Gave him three days to vacate the parsonage. Wife and three children. That's a hard place. That's a rocky place. Had nowhere to go. That's a hard place. The pastor, where is the honey? During the funeral, they were playing videos of the life of Dr. Lynch. I saw him on one on CNN. Sitting behind his daughter, Loretta, doing her Senate confirmation hearing for U.S. Attorney General. That's honey. I saw him in the Oval Office shaking the hand of President Obama. That's honey. I saw him on Air Force One with his leg crossed. Reading a magazine. That's honey. That's sweetness out of a hard place. Yes, I can testify. During my stroke and Camille's medical journey, I was right up against the rock. The rock was hard and the rock wouldn't move. The rock wouldn't go away. So I asked the Lord, Lord, Give me some honey out of my rock so I can take care of my wife. Lord, give me some honey. The Lord did just what I asked. He gave me some honey in my hard place. I know I'm not the only one here this morning. I know I got some witnesses here this morning that can say, neighbor, just look at me. You want to see honey out of a rock? Just look at me. I'm honey out of a rock. Life hasn't been easy, but he bought some honey out of my hard places. 
honey out of my rocket situations. You bring honey out of the rock. In closing this morning, honey, honey in the biblical sense was known for its sweetness, medicinal qualities. It was a delicacy, sometimes presented as a valuable gift. Honey often symbolized abundance and prosperity. Some 20 times in the Old Testament, the land was flowing with milk and honey. Isaiah said in 7.15, Emmanuel would eat butter and honey that he may know to refuse evil and choose the good. He chose the good, but still experienced the hard places of life. Born on the shadow of death, a hard place. Born in poverty-stricken condition and had nothing to call his own, a hard place. Born, in, in, born into a despised and rejected race, a hard place. Jesus tried to do good, but every time he did, someone would turn into evil. That's a hard place. If he stopped to forgive a sinner, he was called a friend of sinners. A hard place. He spoke the truth and was called a liar. Hard place. He revealed the power of God. And religious leaders said he was a devil. A hard place. Peter denied him. Hard place. Judas sold him out. Hard place. Disciples deserted him. Hard place. No matter where he turned or what he did, he faced hard place. But Jesus never ran away from the hard places of life. He accepted the rocks and the honey in there. Yes, Jesus faced the rocks of life. Men took him outside the city and crucified him on a rock, a hill called Calvary, a place that looked like a school. His friends took his dead body and placed it in a rock. Joseph of Arimathea knew tomb, where it lay for three days. But when he rose from the dead, from the hills of Calvary and from the tomb, flowed sweet honey, of salvation. He's honey out of the rock. He's sweet. I know. He's sweet. I know. Storm clouds may rise. Storm winds may blow. I'll tell the world wherever I go I found a savior. He's sweet. I know, yes, he's sweet. In the morning, he's sweet. At noon, he's sweet. In the minute hour, he's sweet. In the doctor's office, he's sweet. I know. You can get honey. Have your rocket place. Lord can bring honey out of the most difficult experiences of life. That's how we have survived as African Americans. We've had some hard places. First name was Boy, last name was Nick. Put on ship. Packed like sardines. When the disease broke out on the ship, four shiploads thrown out in the middle of the Pacific and was eaten by sharks. And those who made it to America put out on the put out on the on the block to be sold to the highest bidder. 
treated just like an animal. Then we came through the third the third is during the Great Depression, the Great Depression, and then the sixties. And Dr. King talked about a dream he had. Schools were segregated, white and colored. We've come a long way. Some rocky places. Some rocky places. And now we have degrees. We have money. We know the man downtown. And we still got rocky places. And the worst is this, these upper the Negroes. The bourgeoisie who think they pull themselves by their own bootstraps. You ain't even have no boots. You forgot where you come from. It won't help nobody. And we should be the first to want to help those in need. We should. But he can bring honey out of your rocks. But we all stand. If you're here this morning and you're viewing live stream and you don't know Jesus and you're in some rocky places, the Lord did not say that we won't have rocky places, but if you get to know him, he'll be with you in your rocky place. But you need to have an experience with Jesus. You need to know him. And the Bible says you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believe in the rights with the mouth confess the men of salvation. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord they shall be saved. If you want your rocky place to become sweet, give your life to Jesus. Have any of you all ever thought about some of those situations that we've not told people about? I mean, I'm talking about some hard places. And you, you don't even know now really how you came through it. When you think about it, that, that means that the Lord, you, you have some honey in your, in your hard place. You survived it. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask that Reverend Pedigan will come and lead us in a word of prayer this morning. And there are those in here, I can say, I'm in a rocky place. I'm in a hard place. So we need prayer. Amen. I just said the other night, Lord, where's the honey? Where's the honey? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come once again, Lord, standing in your presence, Lord. Thanking you for your many blessings that you have stored upon us, Lord God. Thank you for last night rest and uprise early this morning. Oh, God, we thank you. It could have been the other way, God, but you allowed us to see another day that we never seen before. God, we just want to say thank you. Lord, as many times, Lord God, that I have been in the hard place, Lord God. The rock has been so hard, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, you don't know which way to go, which way to come. But God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your tender loving kindness. How you watch over and take care of us day by day. God, we thank you. Lord, there's no other help we know, Lord. But you always there for us, Lord God, and you has the hunting right there for us, Lord God. 
But without you, Lord, there is nothing. We know we have to trust and depend upon you, Lord God. For there is no other help we know. We got to believe, Lord. We got to trust in you, Lord. We got to know that everything's going to be all right, Lord God. Through the rock, God, there, your honey is right there, folks. Your honey is there, Lord, and all we got to do is just believe it. Lord, day by day, we need you to walk with us, Lord God. We need you to lead and guide us, Lord God, and help us along the way. Lord, bless and keep us, Lord. Lord, bless everyone in this sanctuary on today, Lord God. Lord, touch the hearts, the mind, and the souls, Lord God. And God, we thank you for it, God. We thank you for keeping us, Lord God. Helping us, Lord, day by day, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord God. Lord, continue to bless Pastor Hurst, Lord. Continue to bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord God. Oh, God, take him down to the storehouse every day by day, Lord God. Keep him in his word, Lord, and walk with him, Lord God. And help him, Lord, and bless him, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord. Help us even the more, God. And keep us holy, self the pleasing in thy sight. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Reverend, thank you, Reverend Peter. As we make ready to share in our holy, in our holy, uh, holy communion, we're so thankful. If you came in late and you've been omitted with the bread or the wine, if you need it, you raise your hand. We'll make sure that it will be given to you. Has anyone been omitted? Before we share in this, I want to uh, personally thank um, Anita for reminding us visually about Black History Month. The, um, the banners on the podiums, the foyer, when you walk into the same the foyer, uh, she has things that remind us of our history. Uh, thank you for your creativity and your professionalism. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Oh, God, our Father, we are so thankful now for this time of Holy Communion. You say that none of us should take it unworthy because if we take it unworthy, we eat and drink into our own condemnation. So we ask in Jesus' name that you forgive us of all of our sins against thee and against heaven. And God, I surmised that while Jesus was dying on the cross, if there any of us could approach his throne and say, Lord, give us more, that you would say, I have no more to give. That's a supreme example of love, the Lamb of God, the propitiation for our sins. Now bless now this cup, bless now this bread. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we all stand. I want to uh, remind um, the executive committee, the executive committee, there will be a meeting via uh, phone conference on Tuesday at 6.30, executive commission, committee, 6.30 Tuesday via conference call. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Kim.
Come on, choir. Let us bow, oh Lord, we are so thankful. Uh, Mildred Aline, who, who had a medical emergency. I pray in Jesus' name that you touch that body, that you move places that medicine have no effect. You've done it for me. And I know you can do it again. Those in our church who got medical diagnoses that seems too big for doctors, for oncologists, but you're the great physician. You are a miracle worker. All power. It's in your hand. We, we got all the forces of heaven behind us. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, angels. We got everything we need. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself Jehovah Rapha. And move, Lord. Move like you never moved before. Now to him who's able to keep us and keep us from falling. In the strong and perfect name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do ask it. And the people of God said, amen, 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 amen. and amen. Tell your neighbor, he's going to get some honey out of this rock.